Hey, what's up guys? I'm Ray Torn and welcome back to Norland. So last episode we lost our first lord. Unfortunately, Guthrum's wife passed, Thyra. And that was definitely a matter of being unlucky. I have done, I don't know how many uh, wolf hunts in this game, a hundred or so, and I've never seen a character die in one. I've certainly gotten injured, had a few that uh, got to the point where they're bleeding and had to wrap it up and might have got a scar or two, but I've never seen a character die, at least not from just one wolf. There is this event that can happen in the game where uh, I think it's like 12 wolves will attack your city. There's these different like disasters that happen and that's one of them. And that actually ended my first game because I hadn't built up my military enough. So all of my lords ended up dying and I lost the game. That was my first one and uh, I've had many since. And there's always some type of disaster that causes you like massive issues. But I have learned to, learned to account for that one because you will see uh, the same set of disasters that will happen. They seem like they happen in the same order as well most of the time. I uh, did get our first guest over here. This is Ronan, the King of Lakehold. So kings and other characters will visit your province. And you don't have any control over them. But it's a great way to improve relations with other kings as well as their heirs. So that when the, the king dies you can have a good relationship uh, with the next ruler can cause some issues as well. Sometimes they'll try and like seduce your wife. So it causes lots of drama. But yeah, going back to the hunt guys, that, that was a, definitely a rare occurrence. And somebody has said we should have expected that because she had a combat skill of three. But I've sent people off to uh, wolf hunts that had combat skills even less. I mean, in fact, in this series, if you remember, Ragnar went on a hunt with his brother Guthrum and his combat skill was just one. And he didn't even really get injured. I think he just got like a little cut, which left this scar here. So I guess he got injured, but it wasn't uh, severe. And so yeah, definitely not uh, generally what happens, even when you send uh, low combat skill characters. And she had uh, not just the heavy armor, but she also had a shield. One advantage of having characters visit is that if your own characters have high enough intelligence, you can play them and die in order to take their holy rings. So you'll bet five holy rings and whoever wins will, will get them, but uh, King Ronan here, unfortunately, is broke. So we can't send, say, Guthrum after him, or I guess it'd probably be better to do Aslog, she has the higher intelligence, to see if we can't win his rings. But maybe with future visitors, that would be an option. Now, unfortunately, we cannot get this Lord's House constructed due to the lack of wood. We have wood, but they're in the building storage, so we're going to go ahead and have this one empty out now in order to try and get this built before the end of the day. I don't think it's going to be enough time. It does require one of the workers to go get that wood. So remember this Lord's house is being constructed for the bishop, which we just got last episode. So the bishop is pretty important. Uh, they're a character that you don't control, so much like a visitor. But they are the Lord, so they have all the, the needs of the Lords. They need to have a house as well, the Lord's house. That's why we're getting that constructed until they do. They do get a fairly large uh, penalty to their mood due to being homeless. You see he's also upset because we have few fanatics. So there's three different special conditions that a character can have. And this includes lords and peasants as well as the other types of inhabitants. So the first is one that we already have for Aslog. She is agnostic. So we can see the effects here. She'll have a constant negative thought, which we can take a look at that here. That's a negative seven. But she's not as heavily impacted by sins, which that's an element that we'll see pop up now, uh, which is one of the many mechanics that I feel is a bit unbalanced, because just uh, telling a cruel joke is considered a sin and your characters do it all the time, particularly if they have the sarcastic trait. And so they're constantly getting sins, which uh, affects their mood and also makes the bishop not like them, which is important because the bishop's opinion of your king affects the matriarch's relationship. Again, that has many effects, including what you can purchase from the traitor, which we do need to send Guthrum to connect with the traitor once he gets over here. But the sins can cause a lot of problems for the mood of your characters. 
that will eventually disappear after a certain amount of time, which depends on the particular sin. And for agnostics, they disappear quicker. So that's one of the advantages of, of, of having this, this status. But they are disliked by the bishop. And then it causes problems with uh, fanatics, which is one of the other three statuses. So fanatic, everything's basically the opposite of somebody who's agnostic. So they get a positive mood. And also they like pain. So if uh, they're in pain, they'll get uh, a positive mood bonus based on how much pain they're in. So it results in a much better mood. However, if they sin, then it will affect their mood a lot more. So this trader is much worse than some of the other ones we've been dealing with lately. And so this is the one we're gonna want to purchase our books from. I'll we'll probably want to get quite a few since we don't know how good the next uh, trader is going to be. So let's go and get a lot of these basic ones. We're going to get the training ground, the scaffold. We won't get this one, although it's really helpful. There's a lot of things you need to construct it, including having access to tools. Uh, so let's go and get the workshop first and the coal furnace. And we'll wait to get the, the peasant's house as well. So this is going to cost 388 but let's go ahead and sell some of our moonshine because we can't possibly use or trade all this. And let's sell a little bit of this beer as well. Now you'll notice as we sell this, the number for the market saturation is going up. So in this game, it does have supply and demand. So the more that you sell beyond this number, the lower the price that the trader will pay for that particular trade good because each trade good does have its own market saturation stat with some of them having higher numbers and other having lower numbers. So you can sell quite a bit of rutabaga before you have an issue, but you're not really gonna get much for rutabaga because it is such a low price. And so generally it is better with these types of goods to instead turn them into uh, another finished good. So in this case, we turn a rutabaga to the moonshine and then sell that finished good instead of the raw good because it only takes one rutabaga to make one moonshine. You do have to account for the cost of wages but remember what wages if you set your prices right you should be getting all that money back the other thing to consider is the temporary price adjustments so in the case of coal or iron we can see that the prices are a bit higher sometimes that's not really for a reason just as the temporary price increase while other times uh, which we've already been notified of this it is for a specific reason and that's the attack on misthaven increasing the price of iron. And so basically like any trading system, you want to sell high and buy low. That should be your goal. So you can optimize how much money you're bringing in because money is uh, sometimes difficult to, to manage, particularly when it comes to like the, the bride prices, as you've seen, those can be very expensive. Now there are ways on the world map besides just trading to earn huge chunks of money. We'll probably take a look at that a bit later in the game. So I was talking about the three different statuses and we left off on fanatics. The number of fanatics that you have is important for your matriarch relationship. So you see we only have 16% fanatics right now and so we're getting a negative three. So the matriarch would prefer that more of our population was highly religious. Of course the bishop's opinion can really help here. Uh, we were look, just looking at the trade and I didn't show the fact that some of the items, we'll actually go talk He's eating right now, so I'll let him finish eating. But yeah, some of the items you might have noticed that they're red. That's because we don't have a high enough opinion with the matriarch in order to purchase those. And the bishop's opinion is pretty helpful here if you can get the bishop to like you. Uh, as of right now, he's happy that we have a sufficient number of temples for our population. But apparently we're a sinner already. I'm guessing, yep, it's a joke. This particular sin doesn't impact our mood that much. It'd be more so if we were a fanatic. However, the, uh, the bishop and any other fanatics are not going to be happy about it. Which, we can take a look at the bishop here. Of course, he's unhappy because he's homeless. Hopefully, we'll get that fixed tomorrow. He's also being neglected by Gutram. He is an ascetic. Because he's been a fanatic for a long time, he does not experience thoughts of lack or excess of rings. So, he doesn't care about the rings. Which, I think the bishop just uh, hands over all the rings to the church anyway. Because he'll be getting a lot of rings... You know, if we sin, the other way besides just letting the sin disappear, which you can see this one is going to last for 89.2 hours, the other way to get rid of the sin is to confess to the bishop. And how expensive this is going to cost you in Holy Rings depends on the particular sin. 
So the Cruel Joke is, I think, the lowest level sin, and so it's not very expensive. But considering the frequency that characters tell Cruel Jokes, you can see how this could become an issue, particularly for a fanatic. This could be very costly, since it impacts their opinion so much. There's other options available as well. So if the Matriarch's relationship with the King is greater than 25, you can get a blessing. That's pretty helpful. You can beg for forgiveness, but we don't need forgiveness. You can also do a divorce through here. And you can console the character if they need comforting. And so those are the unique actions you can do with the bishop. Let's go back to Radomir, which maybe might change his name. Yeah, I think we're going to change his name. Let's go back to his traits. So he has the forecaster talent. That'd be helpful if he got trade up, but yeah, I don't know if that would actually impact us because, again, he's not like a, a normal lord that we can't uh, give orders to. Let's take a look at our economic report real quick. So we're still doing pretty good, selling a lot more goods than the wages that we're paying. And we're gonna name him Odin, since he has such high intelligence and teaching skill here. He's also a gambling addict, so he'll get uh, different mood opinions based on how often he plays dice. He's reckless, and then he's got his culture. So we have agnostic and fanatics, and then the third condition is a loyalist, which I don't think we have any loyalists just yet. Often one of your lords will become a loyalist, sometimes your, your spouse, sometimes your, uh, your sibling. But loyalists uh, are really helpful for the peasants because they get a 30% increase in production. And so you want to have as many loyalists as possible. And the best way to get loyalists is just to ensure that your peasants are happy. Uh, same thing with your lords. They have a uh, very good loyalty, as you'd expect, that would impact their ability or the chance that they become a loyalist, which currently Guthrum's at 60, while our wife is at 65. Once we start rewarding them with some of these rings, then we'll see that go up a lot, and maybe we can get one of them to, to be a loyalist to us. Another really helpful bonus for having loyalists is that you can recruit them into your, your military without any negative penalties, which, you know, we haven't started up the, uh, the soldier stuff just yet, so you don't really know how any of that works, but that should be maybe today or tomorrow, because I'm going to get that built today. Just going to wait till it gets to daylight here, and then we'll go ahead and, and get these set up to construct, because we do have the required wood and iron. So let's going to get that constructed now. We're going to want this somewhat close I mean, I say close, it's not close, but, you know, closer to the exit, since that's where we're going to be sending our army most often. Now, this is kind of in the way here, and we're going to be moving that. I might move that now. Yeah, we do have the spare wood, so I was going to move it over to here, so it'll be closer to the trees. And then we could also get another dormitory constructed, so we're going to construct that right there. And then we'll put the barracks right here. I'm trying to make it so that the buildings line up rather than necessarily the the rectangles for the build space. So I think this looks a little bit better putting right here. So yeah, I was going to construct that there. So yeah, we'll work on both of these. We have plenty of wood to do uh, two of these, but that's that's going to be it. Should have moved this a little further over just for the future, like maybe over here, but too late now. I don't really want to spend the additional wood to move it again. So Guthrum is currently inspired, increasing all his skills by five. So now would be a good day to have him do some learning, which we need to get that set up for all of our characters anyway, since we have new books available. And you see that two of our characters did get some knowledge that we didn't specifically research. So Ragnar has captives. Normally armies with captives move 50% slower than without them. This knowledge removes this penalty. So when Ragnar takes captives, he can move at the regular speed on the world map. And then Aslog, she's at the intimidation of tramps. Vagabonds intimidated by executioners will be afraid to commit crimes for two days instead of one. This is part of the criminal system that we haven't had to interact with just yet. Yeah, these uh, knowledge that we gained, there's two possibilities how we got that. Most likely is that they're insights. So if we take a look... Alright, our intelligence here. It impacts the likelihood of having an insight, which this happens rarely while giving instructions at a production building, provided that the character is happy. You can also get insights as a result of a strong nervous breakdown. 
And so that's probably where we got that knowledge is from insight. There's also the chance that we got it from wise talk. This is where one character shares knowledge that they have with another character during a conversation. So we could have gotten it from somebody who came to our country that we were talking to. I'm not sure how many people have come thus far, so I don't know what the likelihood of that. It was probably insights is where we got those. So let's go ahead and start with the workshop. And normally I put Aslog in charge of this, but because Gutram is inspired, we're gonna have him do it. So he'll work on that. And then we're gonna have Ragnar do the training ground. Try and get his intelligence up. And then the coal furnace will have Aslog research that. So all of them will be researching something today. I don't know how long uh, she'll be educating her daughter. So if she spends a lot of time doing that, she probably won't get much research done. So that's another reason to have Gucham work on the workshop, because I think it's a little bit important to have the workshop first. While some of the things that you construct in the workshop, you do need the coal furnace, there are other things that you can that you can make that doesn't require the coal. But iron is gonna be one of our main shortages. So Brunhilda has increased both her command and her combat skill. We got the dormitory constructed. And there are some forest bandits out there. We're also getting our tributes. All right, excellent. So there's gonna be a lot more rutabagas. Again, we're gonna be swimming in rutabagas. Uh, they didn't finish this just yet due to the lack of wood. Okay, so let's actually go ahead and make sure that does get finished up. They need 10, and this is closest. So let's go ahead and ship the, the produce goods now because I want to make sure that gets done today so we can start hiring some soldiers. Because we do have some unemployed workers, so it would be best to go ahead and get them employed as soldiers if possible, which I'll show you guys what I mean by if possible. Because you can't just hire soldiers whenever you want. There's specific uh, traits or requirements in order to hire somebody. Our barracks is now constructed, so we have somewhere for our warriors to live. And you can see that out of all of our peasants, we can only recruit so many of them. There's only 14 available here. There's three primary conditions where a peasant would agree to become a warrior. So the most likely is that they're unhappy. And so that's all these red peasants. So they're not happy with their lot and therefore they are willing to become uh, a warrior because if you're not happy with uh, what's going on in your life then might as well try something else. However, if you recruit this unhappy peasant then you'll see that they'll receive a strong negative thought of fear of death which lowers their bravery threshold. So basically it makes them useless for a time until they get rid of that and then also they're super unhappy which they were already not very happy obviously. And so that can result in them uh, completely deserting your province. And so they'll, they'll leave the province. So hiring unhappy peasants certainly isn't the best option available. Now you'll notice that there's these other characters that we can hire. These are fanatics, but they will not become our soldiers unless our king is a saint. So fanatics are not even an option unless your character is a saint. The other third condition, our most uh, common condition where you can hire peasants, is if they're loyalists. And if that's the case, much like when they're a fanatic, they will not get this penalty here for the uh, strong negative fear of death. The loyalists and the fanatics don't care about that, I guess, because in this case, they want to risk their life and potentially give their life uh, for their religion. And same thing with the, the loyalists, but in that case, they're willing to give their life for their king. So on top of their 30% reduction bonus, that's another advantage of having loyalists, is that you can recruit them as warriors and they won't get that one penalty. Now there are other options available. You can instead recruit prisoners. We don't have any of those yet, so not available to us. And then there's mercenaries, which in their case, they usually are much better soldiers because they have higher combat skills. That's what this number is, by the way, down at the bottom of their character portrait. That is their, their combat rating, so how good they are as a soldier. So these guys uh, are generally better as soldiers as you'd expect, but they do cost money, and how much they cost is based off that combat rating. So these characters here with the 15 combat rating are gonna be quite a bit more expensive than, say, this character here who just has a combat rating of four. Unlike peasants or prisoners, mercenaries are not recruited immediately. It takes them a day or two to reach your settlement. Uh, they also don't have any equipment. That's the case with anybody that you hire. Uh, so you will have to equip them out of your own stockpile. The final and perhaps the most important thing to consider when you're hiring warriors 
is that the church will tax your army based on the combat skill of your warriors. You'll see all the information for that in this tooltip here on the tax of warriors. Tax depends on the total combat skill of the warriors. It's calculated daily and accumulated until the arrival of the holy caravan. But here's the key. The amount taxed for each warrior is determined by their combat skill at the time of recruitment and does not increase as their skill grows. And so basically, it's best to hire relatively weak warriors and then train them at that training ground that we're currently researching. So if a character has a combat rating between one and three, then it's gonna cost you six gold per day. And so generally you wanna always hire somebody of a combat rating of three before one or two. But then after that, it increases by two per day for each combat rating. So this mercenary who has a combat rating of four is going to cost the default six plus two for the increase uh, combat rating of one. And so if we hired somebody that has a combat rating of 15, then you see the tax will go up by 30 per day. So your army can get incredibly expensive, particularly if you're hiring these high level characters. And remember that tax is in addition to their wages. So we're gonna hire three of these at level three. So that's gonna cost us 18 gold per day on the taxes, so every time uh, that we deal with the trader. And you can't entirely avoid the tax if you wanna trade at all. Now, if you don't trade, then you don't have to pay it, but it does accumulate. And so if you go, you know, our tax currently is 18. And so if we go two days, that's uh, 36. And then I'll just keep on adding up. So our warriors will now live in the barracks rather than in the dormitory that also houses 10. So that'll be our initial goal is to get 10 warriors. And of course we do pay them a different wage. We're paying them 10. And I'm actually gonna go ahead and increase the wage for the peasants now. Because we can see that a lot of them are quite unhappy uh, because they're both hungry and they have fatigue so they haven't been buying the alcohol. I think the issue here is that they're not willing to eat the rutabagas or the moonshine right now. And so we're gonna force them to do that. Just until we have a better production for beer and for the flour, because I want that for our lords or to sell because the beer is worth a lot. And so we are not going to allow them to buy the flavorful L or the beer. And then we're gonna do the same over here, requiring them to buy rutabaga. Now that is gonna upset our warriors quite a bit, but they're already upset. But we just took a look at one of our warriors, but you can see that they do have different outfits. So they're kind of a blue, I don't know what color you call this here, but yeah, a little blue uh, trim is how I recognize them, with the peasants being green. You see they have that massive penalty for the fear of death. And it takes uh, three days to expire, to fully expire. Now that will go down slowly and become less of a problem, but basically the, the warriors are gonna be unhappy for quite a while. Uh, we've also seen our first criminals now. Now that we have some warriors, let's go ahead and put them to work using the patrols. So we won't need to do the day patrols. I mean, it is helpful for dealing with the wolf attacks, but if there's any warriors in the area, they'll help fight them anyways, as will your, your lords. We just need to hunt a little bit more often. Maybe we'll go hunting with Ronan tomorrow to increase the, uh, the opinion with them. And Ragnar, he's about halfway done with the training ground. I do really want to get that completed. But the night patrol, on the other hand, is pretty important because that's when crimes are predominantly done. Uh, day patrol, I should mention, this is important when it comes to prisoners as well, stopping them from escaping. But we don't have any prisoners yet. But we do want to set up the night patrol and we're going to put it somewhere right around here and then increase the, the range of it. We'll also increase the max combat skill that we allow here up to 20 obviously not a factor at the moment but this is going to be the patrol radius and we only need one guard doing that for now i suppose we can employ two guards since we don't have the training ground just yet but basically you want the patrol radius to encompass the hall since that's where your gold is kept and so any thieves will attempt to steal your gold from there you also want it to encompass the library since they can steal books. The stealing of gold and the books, that's usually done when another country hires one of uh, the criminals 
specifically the cutthroats to do it, which we don't have any cutthroats just yet. That's like the next level of criminal. We currently have two vagabonds though. And it seems like we got those as soon as we got ourselves some warriors. I don't know if that's required before. Well, no, because I've definitely had some criminals be before I had warriors. So maybe it was just a, a coincidence or perhaps just because we had a lot of unhappy people. But yeah, you wanted to encompass the library and the hall just in case somebody tries to steal your gold or your books. And then you also wanted to encompass the Lord's houses, as many as possible, since that is where they'll try and steal the holy rings of your Lord, because essentially they're kept in their lockbox. Uh, but you see, we got a notification here that our warriors are deserting the city. Not surprising, since they're all quite unhappy. So I was expecting that we might lose one. Uh, so you know what, let's go ahead and reduce the guard level down to one. Just one for now. We also finally learned the, the workshops. All right, excellent, so we're gonna wanna get that built. Uh, but first, let's set them up to researching the scaffold next, since we now have an issue with criminals. So let's go ahead and set that workshop up to construct now. And we're probably just gonna place that right here, if we can fit it. And it looks like that would work. Yeah, we'll put it right there. Now eventually we do want to get the pathways put everywhere, but you see how expensive those are. We can place a few more just to speed up movement, at least over to the temple. So I'll build them out like so. But you can see how having three tiles worth of pathway is pretty expensive. Uh, we got our economic rewards, and this time we did not sell enough goods to pay our wages, and that is because I made that adjustment here, forcing them to buy the rutabaga and the moonshine. That's just a temporary one. We'll change it back because we actually really want our warriors to be able to purchase the other goods. What we could do is limit how many are purchased each day. So maybe make it it's like 10 flour, maybe like 15 beer per day, and then hope that our warriors are the ones who purchase that just until we're able to construct another market, another tavern. Because what you generally want to do is have a separate one for your warriors so that you can uh, so you can specify that they're the ones that are able to purchase the beer. So you can see here we can check who's allowed to purchase from here. So yeah, eventually we would want to get our own markets and tavern for the warriors. Maybe place that over here somewhere. And that way we can make sure that they're buying the, the beer or getting access to the beer and the flour first. Just until we have enough of it being produced for all of our people, including our lords. So I want to make sure that they get that. I don't want them eating the uh, the rutabagas uh, or drinking the, the moonshine. All right, so it's a new day. Aslog has not woken up, so she is not participating in the, the morning service. She spent too long studying the coal furnace, went to bed too late. And we have now seen that the desire system has just started up. So we'll take a look at all of our characters' desires. Ragnar desires uh, intimacy. So he'd like to have a date with Aslog, preferably. But if uh, that can't happen, he'll uh, find other means to satisfy it. So hopefully they'll have a date tonight. It's been a while since they've had one. So both of them have the need for it. Uh, Gutram also wants intimacy. And uh, unfortunately his, his wife is dead, so not an option for him. While Aslog very specifically desires a reward, she feels undervalued and dreams of receiving a, re a reward for their king, or excuse me, from their king. And so that's what I was saving these holy rings for, as for once the desire system unlocked. And so now we will grant them out. Uh, he just needs to keep 20, uh, 25 in order to keep this very many rings, the plus 14. So yeah, we'll grant Azlog 5, and that'll get her up to 16, and she'll get that uh, positive boost there. And so, do we want to do that now? We'll, we'll wait until she wakes up. That also allows Ragnar to continue studying the training ground, which I really want him to get that completed so we can, we can get it constructed. Uh, though we do not yet have the iron. Ragnar's intelligence did just increase up to 8. All right, excellent. And we also completed the workshop, so we need to assign Gutram to take care of that for us. Uh, this can construct tools, bows, and daggers. So basically, the weapons we need for our soldiers. And we'll take a look at the production for that as well. So two of these we can't even construct yet, because for tools we need to have access to coal. We can still set this up. 
and bows, we need to have access to tools. Now daggers, we can construct, it just requires iron. However, we want to use our iron for other things at the moment, so I'm not going to set them to, to make any daggers. So basically, they won't really have any uh, use just yet. And so we might not even want to assign a worker or have Guchram do the instructions since we have the problem with iron. So let's go and pull the worker out of that and just kind of put the building to sleep. Because yeah, I really want to get the, the training grounds constructed and that requires a significant amount of iron. So I probably shouldn't have constructed this just yet because what we really need to do is get the wood available to improve our mine. That will also increase the amount that we can, that we're able to mine. You can see that we only have a, a reserve of 100, and after that, we won't be able to get any more iron out of it. But every time you upgrade it, not only does it get the production bonus and another worker, so you get the, the iron quicker, but it also adds another 200, or excuse me, another 100 iron that you can get from it. Uh, so we did get the training ground. So to show you guys just how much iron this is going to require, it's 20. And so it's going to take us a while to get that. Uh, we also have some world events. There's a bride to be married off in Treewood, and also some forest bandits are hiring. So Treewood was who we did the marriage with last time. This is Mata. She's 18, so quite young, and she's decent enough. Not as good as his former wife, also not going to bring us many items here. But he does need a spouse. I just don't really want to pay again. This one is cheaper at 578. Yeah, I'm not really looking forward to, to having a pay again, but it probably is the best option for Guchram to have a spouse. So maybe we'll go ahead and do that. Uh, yeah, I think we'll go ahead and pay, guys. Again, the items we got are really worth far more than what we paid on the bride price, particularly the, the Holy Rings. Uh, Guchram's management just got to 13, uh, which I did want to assign Aslog over to here. Because Gutrum's doing quite a bit, particularly once we start uh, having him work on the, the workshop here. Perhaps we're going to stop him from studying that and have somebody else do it. Yeah, let, let's stop him. And we could let him eat first, but he'll be alright. He can eat when he gets back. So let's go ahead and send him off again to get another spouse. 578 would be the cost there, so at least it's, it's cheaper. And then I think we're going to have Ragnar do a hunt with King Ronan, though he is currently leaving the settlement. But this will stop him from leaving. I'm not sure how far he got. Let's take a look. Oh, not very far at all. Okay, so they can go on the hunt. I was worried he might have got really far and it would take us a while to, to meet up with him. He'd have to walk all the way back over here. So there is a war in Greenspire. And so now hops is going to be more expensive. Alright, so that Flesh Wolf Battle has started, and hopefully this goes better than it did last time and nobody dies. Again, that was pretty rare. Uh, they're both fighting as well. So hopefully they don't get uh, too badly injured. Uh, Ronan did break his weapon. And then he pulled his dagger out, but that broke as well. <laughs> so now he's punching. Uh, so he's not going to do as much damage. Uh, but Ragnar seems to have gotten the kill here. Not sure if he got the last hit, but uh, we're taking credit for it. We work together, though. And so by doing that uh, hunt together, I don't improve his opinion quite a bit. So that's plus 17, plus we're getting all those conversations. Uh, overall, Ronan and Ragnar are very close, which is good. Uh, Ragnar has also increased his manners. So we're at the end of the day, and Ragnar and Aslog are wasting no time. They're going on the date, which will result in us satisfying that desire for intimacy. And so we'll go ahead and try and satisfy her desire for a reward right after. I did forget about that. So we'll do that here in a minute. And Aslog is pregnant again. All right, excellent. So it was a quite successful coupling. Um, before they enjoy a drink, let's go ahead and do this reward. So this will be the first time that we rewarded a character. You can see it's going to cost the five holy rings. They're going to get the plus 10 mood bonus from being rewarded, and will also increase our loyalty by 25. And it increases the, the relationship between the two of them. She'll still be envious of our rings, though, because we have so much more than her. Yeah, we'll go ahead and reward her. You see, she's already thrown up due to the pregnancy. 
And we're going to have to have Ragnar learn the uh, scaffold now. Since his brother's out of town. So both of their desires will now be fulfilled. And that increases their mood by plus 22. So Ragnar's in a fantastic mood. And this will help Aslog as well, which she was in a pretty crappy mood. She actually refused some of our orders earlier. Uh, so she gets a plus 22 from fulfilling that desire. And we'll have increased opinion with her. Plus 8 for rewarding her. And then we have the increased loyalty as well. Her loyalty is now 89. Runhilda is pretending not to hear Ragnar, ignoring him, probably because he doesn't spend enough time with her, because uh, she's been being educated by her, her mother, rather than by Ragnar. Uh, also, we did get the traitor here, and we won't be able to interact with him, but it's fine, because this trait is actually pretty high. Uh, we did get the result from the bride being married off. Excellent. So now Guthrum has a new bride, Mata. Probably rename her as well. Feel free to provide some suggestions on the name for our new character. Again, keeping with the theme of the Norse, Norse names. Economic report, much better today, now that we have allowed them to purchase some of the flour and some of the beer. Not purchasing as much as they would probably want, and thus that's allowing us to sell some of the rutabagas, because we just do just have so many of those. And then in the tavern, we're selling both the, the moonshine and the beer. And so hopefully that should make our people happier, or at least some of them, the average opinion. And then the warrior's mood, you can see that that's increasing as well. well so let's just see if they're the ones who got... No, unfortunately, he got moonshine at rutabaga. What about her? And she also got the rutabaga and the moonshine. Okay. They don't have much money. So they wouldn't have been able to get both, but I was hoping they'd get uh, at least one of those. And he was not able to get there quick enough, because he does have the money. He just wasn't able to purchase it based on the, the limited supplies that we provided. So we could always increase the number that we're allowing them to purchase. But again, until we uh, have two separate ones for the warriors and the peasants, we'll be a bit limited here on controlling uh, who buys those. So we actually have some problems with our vagabonds here, the criminals. They've attacked, or at least tried to steal, and then got attacked by some of our peasants. So this one's dead. Our, let me take that back, he's just unconscious. They didn't kill him. But this one is dead. So these are two bandits, and what's nice is that we get access to their daggers. So our characters can use that as a backup weapon. Ragnar already has one from the death of his sister-in-law, but our other characters can get access to those. Uh, Mata actually has one now. And once they're all equipped with daggers, then our soldiers will be able to use those, which they're not great weapons, but they're, you know, they're better than using your hands. And any weapons you have in your inventory can also be used by your soldiers when they're doing patrols. We also finish that trade. So continuing to sell the moonshine to get just a little extra income. And we're getting more than we'd get selling the moonshine to the to the church. But overall, we need some more trade agreements if we want to bring in a lot more money. So the wedding ceremony will be taking place today. Our brother and his new wife, his second wife, have returned. They're already dressed up for the wedding. So we're going to need to construct another lord's house for our sister-in-law. But first, let me go ahead and upgrade this mine. It's going to cost 80 wood, and we're going to prioritize that as well. Make sure that gets done. And that leaves us with 59 wood so that we can construct the, the Lord's house. And that will require five of our iron, unfortunately. But we would not uh, be able to construct the training grounds right now anyways. So yeah, let's go ahead and get get that, that built so that she has a home, because otherwise she's going to get that huge hit to her, her happiness. Uh, everybody is in the morning service today, so going to get that nice mood bonus. And then they'll also be doing the wedding a little bit later. Which they should have a, a more organized wedding since we have the, the temple. We have a bishop as well. And this is the priest, which he runs the temple. He's just another peasant, so the bishop doesn't, doesn't run it. We got some notifications over here. The Varn approve of our actions since we've remained at peace, so... Any Varn peasants are, are happy with us. 
Uh, also, some of our soil will be depleted soon. And the way you deal with that is the use of wood. They have to use your wood. So essentially like burning it and using the ash. We can see that the opinion with the matriarch has increased because we now have 57% of our population as fanatics. And that includes many of our lords. Uh, Ragnar is now a fanatic. So those are the effects of that. And we can see that will be affecting his mood as well. He's fanatically religious, so that gives you a plus 12. And then remember, he also gets a mood bonus if he's in any pain. So if he goes hunting and gets injured. Uh, Gutrum is also a fanatic. Remember, he desires intimacy. Hopefully he'll have a date with his wife soon so he can satisfy that desire. Uh, his wife, she's also a fanatic. And I talked about this last episode where they get the desire to see loved ones. And the person she misses is Rourke. And he's the, the king of Treewood and her father. So she wants to go see her father. We'll see if we can appease that eventually. He's not even at home at the moment. He's visiting, I think it said Mist Haven. Might have been some other mist. Or maybe it said Great Mist, which I think is over here. So we'll have to wait until he returns home before we'll be able to, uh, to satisfy that. I'd also like for her to at least have one date with her, her new husband. Now we see that Ragnar was actually denied a date with Aslog, which is understandable. She's pregnant. So with the day just about ready to end here, we were able to get the mine improved, upgraded. And so you can see that our reserves are now at 200. And we'll be producing a lot more per day since we have the, the additional worker. I got a bunch of migrants today, so we need to get them jobs. Might hire some of those as warriors since the average mood for our warriors has increased. Uh, Gutrum and Mata, which I don't think they've been married yet unless I missed that. But yeah, they uh, couldn't wait. So they're already going to Manda's new house. Which remember, we're going to try and rename her. I'm going to wait for suggestions before I do that though. Gutrum's desire has been fulfilled since remember he was desiring intimacy. And so now he's very happy. And just about everybody's happy except for our new lord here. Or new lady I should say. Alright, so the ceremony has started now. Okay, I didn't think I missed it. So I'll go ahead and watch that. So they got uh, acquainted with each other before their wedding, which makes sense. They now know what they're getting into before they actually take that step. Uh, we're going to unsell some of this moonshine. We can see that we already have that tax on warriors. The tax is 12, and that's for two days to so 24 total. So let's go ahead and sell some of that moonshine, maybe a little bit more. And we can also sell some of these hops because we're getting a pretty good price here. I know that this is not exactly the worst trader, but it is an increased price due to the attack on Greenspire. Uh, so yeah, we'll go and sell a little bit of this. I don't want to sell too much because eventually there will become some shortages on this. So we're going to sell a little bit in order to purchase some books. There's quite a few good options here. These are the higher level ones, as are the green ones. These are the basic uh, books. And basically, not only are they more expensive, but so they're they're better. They get better bonuses or uh, better buildings. However, they also take longer to read them. That's why they have a recommended intelligence. Uh, so 13 intelligence is recommended for these ones here. So what I think we're gonna get is the the paper workshop because this is not always available. Sometimes it'll be a little bit difficult to to find that one, and uh, it's pretty important. And then maybe get one basic one. Uh, getting the chancellery would be good. Because once we have this paper workshop, we'll want to use that. And then perhaps the command. Yeah, that looks good. I know that we're not exactly getting the best bonus we could be getting. We're purchasing all these books. But we've almost read all of our books. I suppose we could sell some more hops since it is a, a good price right now. So that way we're actually making money from this trade. Yeah, it looks good. And so now that that's done, he can go participate in his wedding. Or maybe. <laughs> it seemed like he's trying to avoid it. Uh, his trade just went up to 11. All right, so finally, took us a while to increase that. It's harder to increase the, the higher that the skill is. And just like that, the wedding is complete. I think they're married regardless if uh, that has happened yet. I think it's like as soon as the agreement is made, they're considered the spouse. And that's more of just a, you know, it's just ceremonial basically. So unfortunately we do have to end the episode here. That's what I wanted to make sure we got done was that 
wedding ceremony because on the last uh, marriage that we had, Guthrum didn't even get to do the wedding ceremony because she died before he had returned from his trade mission. Or at least I don't think they had the wedding ceremony. They could have done it over here on the altar because I feel like we didn't have the, the temple yet. Perhaps I'm mistaken. I hope you guys did enjoy today's episode. If you did, make sure you have a like on it, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. I do hope to see you guys on the next one, and thanks for watching.